This is what we give away. This is the goal I keep on saying to people, we are giving it away. This is cherry and this a lot of cherry? farmers are paid at this stage. How much are they paying me in dollars for a kg on this stage? Yeah, we do it in shillings. So here they could get 50 bob, 30 per kg. bob per kg. E, e, yeah. half a kilo. Depending on your cooperative. This one now translates to, if you have a good coffee crop, can translate to an AA giving you about 5 to $6 a kilo. So you can see the discrepancies already. That roasting process now gets you from $6 a kilo if you have the best to $22 a kilo. What? First and foremost, if you've already removed your coffee trees, I don't blame you. I don't blame you, I don't judge you. It's been a long time since coffee has made any money in this. It's been a long time. I'm coming from a different aspect whereby I have been more or less forced to understand coffee can be profitable, but it cannot be profitable if we are leaving it at the processing stage. We have been forced to give out the green bean, and then someone in Germany makes billions, yet they produce not even one iota of cherry. Not even one. They don't even have one tree. Why do you think it has been easy for your family, you know, generation after generation to trust the next generation to take care of this gold? There's nothing like trust. It's you have to prove that you're worth being handed over this thing. There's nothing like being given something with a Ati here, okay? You know, have that one. No, when you angu, shikai. No. Have you felt though sometimes like this is too much? When every day, every time, every, every day. day, every day, every day. I'm a human being. Every day, uh, you wake up saying, "I God, please." Hey, it is five thirty. Lazi mani amke. And once you're in the farm, that whole thing disappears. So trust the process. One day. Hi there, my name is Wangeshi and I'm the CEO of Karongoro Coffee and Tours Limited. Karibu Nisana. guys welcome to today's episode of inspire global my name is lynn googie and you, as you can see here i'm standing right in front uh, no behind uh, this beautiful coffee beans here right and we've been always told that kenya is a country of coffee and then it got me thinking why is it that not a lot of us uh, are growing coffee these days and is it true that hakuna pesa kwa coffee now let me shock you i am surrounded by around over 200 acres of land hapa karuguru coffee and they are planting beautiful coffee but today's conversation is all about generation wealth and also where the money is when it comes to coffee imagine i was shocked just to learn that one kg of this ev2 kisha harvest is giving you around 80 bob at the highest sindio but there is an end product that can give you 22 dollars to convert you into kenya shillings that's almost three thousand so why exactly are we not making money coffee wise in this country and what can we be able to do to make sure that coffee is also benefiting us as kenyans and also how is it that this coffee farm here has survived for almost 90 years and it's been run by family members quite interesting we are about to go into this beautiful episode of inspire global with our wonderful guest who is going to walk us through the dynamics of managing a family business and where the money is when it comes to coffee business but before that so you know we have to say thank you to maridadi motors for bringing us here and making sure that we get to bring you impactful conversation and then and also to thank 
thank Kings Developers Limited for always coming through and Denny Mununue Manyumba Kwao. The details are on the screen and the wonderful team that gets to do this muga behind the lens. Naskola pale kwa sound na our other people. We appreciate you. Sawa sawa. Wacha niache jokes. Let's guys, you know how we do on Inspire Global. Get your notebook, get your pen and always remember what we say. No matter what your hustle is, be proud of it. There is no shame in hard work. Acheni tujue. Pesa iko wapi kwa kofi. Tunaeza aji fanya biashara kama familia and what are the lessons we can pick from this great family matters, business and generational wealth. Hi, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm well, thank you. And yourself? Uh, um, I, I'm a, I feel good. Yeah. I think this is my what cup of coffee. This is my second. This is my house coffee. So I'm feeling really good right now. Good, good. Nice to finally meet you. And nice to meet you too. And thank you for making time. Karibu sana. Yes, yeah. sir. Could you introduce yourself to our yeah. audience? Yeah, uh, thank you. My name is Getao Waweru Karanja. I am the director of Karongoro Estate Limited and the production manager of Karongoro Coffee and Tours mm -hmm. Limited, which is our value addition side of oh, the farm. All right. Yeah. You know, I just had a side conversation with your CEO yeah. and I asked her how many people have this place benefited family wise. And one of the things that stood out for me, I just came from saying how I admire your grandpa, is that he made sure all of you got equal level of education is that true yes he did he equalized us basically yes. um there was no point of some people saying they've gone to this kind of school or that other kind of school every child had to have the same basic education mm -hmm. so for my grandfather it was if five of you have already started igcse then he thought it was better everyone else follow the same system. Mm -hmm. Yes, so a lot of us came through the IGCSE. All right, yeah. and I know you guys are known for coffee. Oh. I mean, the <laughs> coffee I've had here is amazing. Thank you. But before we even get to the coffee, the reason why this conversation was very interesting for me, it's because I am so tired when people say Africans and wealth, there is no generational wealth in African systems. And I find a family that has done that from a to Z, that really made me happy because I feel like it's time we started, it's time we start owning our stories and it's time we actually start giving flowers to those people who taught us you know, all the beautiful things in life, which mm -hmm. I think in this case is your grandpa, but before we get to the coffee part mm -hmm. could you tell us, number one, what do you guys do here and then give us a background of this place so that when we are talking about generational wealth our audience can be able to understand where we are coming from. Okay, um, let's even start with the history of the farm yeah. and how it all started. Now, it started with a fellow called Glassford, all the way from New Zealand. And he came here around 19, he started his journey from New Zealand in 1919 mm -hmm. and landed here about 1920, most likely 1921, and started this farm in 1928. So even as we even go around, you'll see some of the coffee stamps are almost 80 years old mm -hmm. or even some older. Mm -hmm. And he ran this farm all the way until 1965 when as a family and after independence, they felt it was time to give it back. Yes. Okay. They, they, they had no qualms about holding on to this precious commodity mm -hmm. and they sold it to the Madvani family at the time in 1965 and they moved back to Australia. This farm was left uh, closed up for some time and my grandfather came in in 1974. Okay, bought the farm uh, and we've been here since then. Mm -hmm. My grandfather has always been an what we call an agriculturist or what we call an agronomist. He has always had a love for things flora and fauna. So Farming came easy to him and also my grandmother. Okay, so it was ones of he was in um, government at the time. So my grandmother was left to handle a lot of the farming investments he had started. <coughs> and as a family, it seems like we have just 
carried on with that same trajectory. I think it's something God has instilled in us that we are going to be farmers whether we like it or not. Okay. Yeah. So you are third generation. Yeah, I am the third generation. So now. meaning there is grandpa. There is grandpa. Your parents. My parents. You <laughs> and us. And, and I just and so met my daughter. I've met your daughter. Fourth generation. Fourth generation. Yes. But talk to me about your grandpa. Uh -huh. I know he's late. Of course, my condolences. But from what you know about him, what kind of a person was he? He was a hard worker. The one thing my grandfather always instilled in us, even when we were children, is integrity and hard work and be honest in anything and everything that you do. He, will, he used to work in the, he used to be the permanent secretary in the office of the president yes. at the time. And uh, he only left politics in 19, uh, I think it was 90, when, 92, mm -hmm. okay, when he lost the Shogo parliamentary seat to Martha Karu at the time. And he went now into straight farming, okay. And yeah, that's how we have been and we have learned from him. Uh, even when we were growing up, we used to come to this farm almost every holiday. Okay, and he used to take us around, show us what he's doing, why he's doing it. Uh, there was even a time this farm he had done, I think it was 20 acres of grapes because mm -hmm. he wanted to start uh, producing wine. Yes, <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> but we all learned from our mistakes. Mm -hmm. It was never the best quality. So he said he scrapped that and said, okay, let us just stick to what we know coffee okay yeah but this is your grandpa now and mm -hmm. of course your parents are bringing you over mm -hmm. for weekends and holidays mm -hmm. but you as a young man mm -hmm. what was your vision like because yeah that's the farm grandpa but me i don't want to be here i was a nairobi boy eh, eh, <laughs> let's go there i was a nairobi boy yeah. i mean who wanted when i was growing up as a kid i mean between the age of five and thirteen you're excited to come to the farm. Yes. I mean, it's a, a, you're away from home. All your cousins are here. And at that age, all you want to do is play. Okay. And you have 200 acres of play. So my grandmother used to always ensure by the time we've woken up, we've washed, we're out of the house at 8 o'clock, doing one or two things mm -hmm. on the farm, especially during picking season. She always used to make sure all my grandchildren have to at least pick a debe of coffee and should pay us for it. Okay. Yeah? Oh. Yeah, she would pay. Okay. So that that knowledge starts entering. Uh -huh. How do which cherries do you pick? And some of us um, used to be a used to try and be a bit more clever. Yes. With the earnings we got from picking a debe, you'd go and cause it was a bit higher. Of course, there was favoritism. Okay. It was a bit higher. <laughs> you'd take a bit of those earnings, pay some worker on the farm to Fill up your debe. Yes. Yeah, so that you can come and tell Shosho it's done. It's here, here we go. Here <laughs> we go. She always knew when you have done that because she would be like, if the people who are experts can pick a debe and it takes so much time, how, did how this have ones? you come yes. within a short hour time and you, you have no experience? Mm -hmm. So, but she was our grandmother, sometimes she always used to let us get away with that. Yeah. But she knew the fact that we have done that means we have actually started talking to the workers, starting to get to understand them and understand what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So in a kind of way, it was knowledge training. All right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, let's go back to you. So for me, I have never always, after 13, I would never wanted to be on the farm. I mean... At 14, what is what do you what what is the interest of a 14 year old? And you know, if you're here over the weekend, there's no party, there's no hangout. You're going. So I remember the last time I ever visited the farm properly and to stay for a very long duration of time. I think I was 15, turning 16, and I had felt that I had been forced at the time. And I just had to sit down with my parents and said, never again. Yes. If I'm coming here, it's for a day. One of those social gatherings that we have, the social corogas that we have. Then I'm out. By evening, sure. If I'm going to stay, not more than a weekend, then I'm back to yes. Nairobi. Uh, my parents understood. Of course, a young man has to uh, has to move around. So, yes. So, they understood that. Uh -huh. And I went out and I was a Nairobi guy. Uh, then, I think it was around... The time I turned 38, um, by that time I had been in interior design. Uh, I worked with my father. It was yeah. a company called Commercial Interior. So okay. I'm an artist by profession. Oh. Profession, All right. Interior design. So I have, a, I have a diploma in that. Wow. And that's what we did from 2003 all the way until 2014. Okay. And uh, some financial hiccups forced yes. me to move from Nairobi 
to thicker. Um, hoping to find greener pastures mm -hmm. in the work that I was doing at the time, interior design. And because, you know, Biashara takes time to grow, yes. get to understand people, get to understand a new environment. Uh, my wife asked me, hold on, as you're waiting and as you're looking for these interior design jobs and to sell some things, don't you have a farm closer to this area? Then I remembered, oh, there was Karunguru. <laughs> yeah. And my wife was like, in the meantime, as we wait, what, what can we be doing to ensure that our kids have food and they are going to school? So my wife and I started selling um, uh, the chai and chapati at the construction sites that were nearby just to get ourselves going. Okay, so for me, it was really a step in the lowest direction because I was an interior designer. These are people I used to come and supervise yeah, and design. Okay, now you're coming to them to sell. Shaina Shabashi, you're, 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 you're coming with the with all the jerry cans wow. and things to, to do that. Mm. And it was a point you had to survive. And uh, my wife said, okay, that is good. And that is when I started to learn eh, to be humble because these construction workers are honest. They will never leave you without paying their bill. Even if they know they're being paid at the end of the week, they'll even call you if they didn't come to work yes. and pay you. Yeah, even if it's 200 shillings. Yeah, where? That got me to start un understanding humility and understanding how to properly work with people and understanding where they come from. Mm -hmm. Taking them as they are and just making sure that uh, you respect them as they are, okay? So my wife also told me, okay, at the same time, go get milk from the farm, buy from the farm, and then we can come and sell wow. uh, to other people. And I was like, okay. Why not? So yeah. I came, mm. talked to my uncles, and they were very willing, and they were even giving me at a price of 25 bob, yeah, for a liter. And I started buying, but after a month of doing that, I started feeling the literage that I was getting out. I started off at 40 liters, but I never surpassed 40 liters. After about a month, it started to drop. Mm. And when I came to ask the family why the milk is dropping, they told me, stay here for a day, figure it out. Wow. I can't teach you, you have to teach yourself. Yes. And I was like, but I have no idea about farming. And they said, yeah, if you stay here for a day or so, you might learn something. You might learn something. And I, okay, fine. I, they, 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 they introduced me to the supervisor of the dairy at the time. And I st stuck with him for a day. And I noticed, hold on, these are huge ngombes, but what they are being fed, and from what my grandmother used to show us, they are not getting their total mix ratio done. Mm. Right, so of course you're getting a cow that is weighing almost 600 kilos. He's only producing eight liters per day. And I was like, no, that can't be. So after I stayed here for three, four days, um, I sat down and had a meeting with my two director, my uncles who were directors at the time. And, they, and I told them, I'm seeing as if they're not being fed right. So they asked me, what is your solution? So I said, okay, I'm not doing anything at the moment. Maybe I could be coming here on a daily basis to see whether I can help run the dairy. And they told me, you know, as a farmer, you can't be doing that back and forth because we are not going to pay you. Yes. However, we are going to give you a chance to do something. And so I said, okay, um, at the moment I'm living in Thika. Um, I'm one month behind in rent. Uh, I need your help then. And they said, okay, fine. How much do you need? And I told them X. And uh, they, they, they sorted me out there and that within a week, I found the lorry at my, at my doorstep. I was being forcefully moved. <laughs> so we put everything and they gave me a uh, living space here. And that's how my journey into farming started. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. We're going to pick it from here, the journey, because I know you never turned back after that, right? Mm. But let's go back a little bit. You said, because it's funny, we were talking about a show we just aired on our platform mm. failure, like from grace to grass, to, to mm. grass you mm. know. I'm looking at you, your grandpa from a political background owning this magnitude, this big farm right here. And then you, one of his grandkids mm. is out there mm -hmm. struggling this and the, what, what you didn't feel the privilege, that privilege of my grand power was this and this. So I need to have everything handled to me because why am I struggling again? The, but with my grandfather, there was no, there was no such thing. 
he sorted yeah he helped you when he came to education you're not going to be given everything yeah you have to at least show that you're capable mm-hmm. um and also my own father yeah um big because uh, my mother is the one who comes from this family yes okay my own father also had to instill that discipline in me you can't rely on your grandfather just because he came from a political background he has a big shamba maybe two three or four of them yes those are for his children what about you itau and that is why you i went into interior design to try and look out for my own yeah. thing yes yeah you're not going to just come to the farm and say i know <laughs> you have to come from a background whereby at least you learn something so with my father i learned a lot about how you work when you, how do you meet a client how do you seal a deal yeah then how do you work to to ensure that you have given the client exactly what they mm-hmm. require that's the whole aspect of interior design mm-hmm. sitting down and making sure that you're designing according to your client's specifications and that teaches you a lot okay okay yes so it was not that at because i am from the karidi family at it is a given no in this family you have to prove yourself before you are given and even for me coming here at that time when things were not working out to be given a space you understand they said they are not going to pay me mm. but they are going to see what i can actually do yes and within six months of just looking at the dairy we had come from a position of 50 liters a day to 280 mm. okay liters wow. yeah per day okay so it is about looking at it and saying are you interested in actually being part of the family business how long can you persevere i mean i only started earning a wage here or salary i started in 2014 and my first salary was in 2018 let's let's put that as a point <laughs> pay yourself pay yourself, pay yourself. my But first got, salary was mm-hmm. in 2018 mm-hmm. it was small at the time but i was so grateful good i was so so you know i came from a position where by even as an interior designer you could be earning up to 10k a day yeah especially when you have a construction site going you have money rent is nothing the minute someone pays you umelipa one year full to the point where by your account is showing you zero my wife also got sick during that time from 2011 with endometriosis and that is a disease that can get you to hospital twice or thrice in a year and at some point insurance looks at you and says eh, <laughs> this is too much you're well over your cover mm. so you have to start removing from your pocket so by the time i was coming here zero 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 we had yes. zero yeah. Yeah. i didn't even know how my children were going to go to school so it was a it was a blessing in disguise from god it was a prayer yeah that when i came here the family decided to stand with me and to teach me not a lot of families do that and even me it came as a surprise these guys are actually I had never gotten that kind of vibe from them growing up where yeah? they were those uncles who you meet in town from time to time you will come here during the social events they give you one advice or two but to actually sit down and teach me yeah this is how we farm this is how we do this to the point whereby they said we've taught you enough now we need outside help to teach you father because each person has their own way of farming yeah has their own knowledge and the problem with family if you're being mentored by one and another feels they also need to teach take you the same direction you can get into loggerheads because this person has taught you one thing and then this person has come and changed what this other person has taught you mm. and then they start the infighting starts so mm. we have to stop that and say hold on yes in order for us to stop fighting about who is teaching who let it be an outside person that means even as a family we step out all the town now will be coming to do and his cousins will be coming and asking us for advice based on knowledge they have already received and it's a better teaching way and mentorship to do it that way mm-hmm. yeah how many siblings uh, does your mom have seven seven So your grandpa had seven, <laughs> seven children, kids. Yes. We'll get there but let's go back to your wife a little bit because mm. I want to come to the coffee part mm. and how you knew now they, I'm doing this but there is also something I can do mm. matters coffee. Mm. You mentioned when you 
fell from here to here. Mm -hmm. Your wife was the one encouraging you yes. to do the chais and chapatis. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could you walk us through that, especially when it comes to that kind of support? Because sometimes people will leave you. Um, so also another surprise for me. Um, God allowed, God gave me the wisdom also to choose wisely. <laughs> <laughs> That is why we are called Madhuri. Because we have we have chosen. <laughs> so okay, but God gives us the wisdom to do so. Okay, and I had not thought about it until <coughs> then. But my wife has been a pillar of support, a strong, strong pillar. She's that woman who, yes, things have gone awry. Okay, fine, they are not sour, sour. But am I going to sit down and blame you? No, I'm going to sit down and talk to you so that you, I can open up your brain so that we can figure our way out of this. We, it's not a me I. and I, no, we. That's the most important in a marriage, we. She has supported me through and through. She has never let me down. I, of course, we've had our arguments. There are many times I've slept on the couch. <laughs> many times. <laughs> yeah, sip coffee. <laughs> hmm? mm -hmm. Many times I've slept on the couch because, yes, I preferred being out there than being at home. But this journey has also taught me how, one, to be a father and to be a husband. Um, when I came here, we after about a year or two, we had to sit down and say, is life out there more important than what we are trying to achieve here? And at that time, believe me, we had no idea where we would be today. We, my wife and I said we were only going to be here for two years until we at least save some money. And then we are back out there again. Shock on, shock on her when I came six, seven months later and I told her we ain't going. We are not going. Then her, she was like, why? Then I just told her, I think, I don't know what it is, but my brain is really telling me, stick. Stick here. Regardless of the pressure, regardless of the family issues, regardless, just stick. Mm. She questioned me about that for another two years. Because okay. <laughs> she kept on saying, ah, okay, we are still here. Then I was like, okay, where do you want us to go? Yet you can see my work is... Now, when my salary came in, she was like, ah, okay. To buy. <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Then she was like, okay, I can see something here. <laughs> but she has always asked me, are you sure it is God who has told you? Am I, it is just your brain telling you because now you found a place that you can be comfortable. Your brain is telling you to, to stay. So it has also been a lot of soul searching yeah, and asking myself, God, is this really what you wanted me to do? And you know what feedback I got? Yes. You, your wife, your children, your cousins are going to be here because what I know is the plans God has for this farm need us to be a family mm. in order to achieve. Good. Yeah. Let's talk about that. The plans God has for this farm yeah. needs you to be a family mm -hmm. in order to achieve. Umekuja maziwa may increase mm -hmm. from 50 to 280, mm -hmm. 280, 280 yeah. liters. Mm -hmm. Of course, there is coffee farming mm -hmm. going around. What was your perception about that when you would see coffee na chunwa wana? I felt zero. Ah! Oh, oh. <laughs> It was on my line. Yeah. Uh, you know, your, the mind takes time to adjust, right? Yes. I felt zero. I mean, I was at the dairy. I had, there was a manager here who is taking care of that. My uncles were taking care of that. So it was not an issue. When it became an issue is when we did a coffee tour. And it was our second one. And uh, a family of Waindi came to have a koroga. Okay. And as I was taking them around, all our trees had succumbed to what we call leaf rust. And all the leaves <laughs> down, down. I was taking people around to show them empty trees and branches and twigs. Wow. As we went around, it kept on hitting me. Eh? You're here. This has happened. And you're part of, you're a family member, not just an employee. What do you think you're going to do about it? 
So of course when you're going around you're making jokes yeah to, to to lighten the situation and of course everyone is telling you don't worry you will improve and what not and but I still felt I no 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 this has happened during my watch. What am I going to do? What is going to happen? That that is the one occasion and then the second occasion is when a hundred bags of fertilizer was stolen from the farm in the morning on a Sunday. A hundred. A hundred bags of fertilizer. Meaning cars came in packed. Meaning our tractor was loaded, left the gate, and we didn't see that thing again. Uh, so I sat here during a management meeting <laughs> and I was just asked by three of my uncles at the time, you mean a whole tractor can live here with your, with, with, without your knowledge and disappear? So what is the whole point of having a family member on the farm? That time no family members used to really live here as such. So I felt challenged and I asked them, okay, what do you need me to do? We need you to look after affairs on matters coffee. So I said, what about the ngombes? They were like, watch an So for now, <laughs> the supervisor is there. He'll manage it. you just be showing up there one, one hour or two hours a day. But we need you at the coffee. So I was like, fine. And I am entering as what? They said, a management trainee. Wow. Will I start receiving some remuneration? Yes, we'll figure that one out. Okay. But first start there. And my first job was the second week of January of 2018. And at the end of that January 2018, I received my first salary as a farmer. <laughs> How much? <laughs> let's not go there. <laughs> let's not go there. Mm -hmm. But uh, let's just say. Uh, was it good? In today's standards, hell no. But you have gotten your first mshahara in something you had never known you were ever supposed to do. Yes. I was so excited. You know, when you take your first check to the bank, bank it, <laughs> yeah, then you go to the ATM, unaweka code, unaona, bah! That account had been empty for two years. You, you, you understand? Yeah. It had been empty. You know, yes. you're because you're just being given handouts. Your parents help you, kidogo. They help you with school fees. You're not feeling as a jama. You're not feeling as a man. And all of a sudden, here it is. It has come. Then I'm like, wow. Yeah. And showing my wife, she was like, well, it's a start. It's a start. Mm -hmm. So her issue is, how do we plan this thing? And I said, well, we just have to plan around it and see how best. Yes. To go about it, we're not paying rent, um, so we're, we're not paying utilities. So the only thing we need to buy is food. Mm -hmm. I think we can manage. Yeah. So she used to take my paycheck, budget it, and tell me, I think you'll only remain with 2,000. I was like, it's fine. It's as as <laughs> it's long as okay. we are good. It's fine. Yeah. Are the kids happy? Are they eating? I had no issues. So we started that way. And I worked for another, what? Uh, another year, it went up a bit more. Yeah. Then I worked for another one and a half years. It reached where it is today. Mm -hmm. uh, at the same time, I started with Karunguru Coffee and Tours. So I, I have two jobs, yeah, making sure the production and the roasting is done well. And also that one, the salary started small. But now I can say it's at a place whereby I can pay school fees. Mm -hmm. I can feed my children. And I can put fuel in a car. And my wife can have her hair done. <laughs> <laughs> my wife can what? have her hair done and she can look as pretty as she needs to be. So we are, t we are, we are kind of getting to that place whereby God has really shown us. Uh -huh. Stick to what I've given you and for sure I will bless it. Yes. Yes. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things shall be added to you. Yeah. It's just like that thing. My mother keeps on telling me about the story of Joseph. Yeah, the, the amazing dream, Technicolor dream, the coat that he had and everything and how he was the apple of his father's eye to be a slave in Egypt yeah, and a castaway to being the governor. Mm. And so she's, my mom always keeps on encouraging me as well. If God could do that to Joseph, if God could do that for Moses, if God could do that for all those other people, why can't he do it for you? Mm. 
And all those people, what did they show? That they worked hard on what God had initially given them. Yes. Their reward came. Yeah. Whether it was in heaven or it was given here. How many acres of coffee are, or plantation are we talking about here? Uh, right now we are talking about 83 hectares, mm -hmm. which is more or less 204 acres of Two, coffee. 200? 204. Mm -hmm. Alafu sisi. 204. Oh, lakini eh. tunauza kota acres. You see? We are uzaing. You are uzaing. Because at the end of the day, eh. even though we are farmers, you have to equalize family members. You can't just say you're selling and there are some family members who are in dire straits. So it came as a light to us that we can actually build a gated community centered around our coffee lifestyle, okay? Because right now, anyone who buys a quarter acre, uh, once the infrastructure and everything is built, there will be a clubhouse, okay, that will have your swimming pool, squash courts, and a five acre lawn that you can rent for parties or even just practice your golf swing, whichever mm -hmm. it is. Mm -hmm. And you have access to the farm to walk around and just, you know, have fun. We will have a cafeteria here. We will have a barista, barista training school and a coffee husbandry school. So there are a lot of plants coming for the next five years yeah. that will allow everyone within this area and the greater Mm -hmm. um, uh, Kenyatta Road to enjoy what we offer here. Okay. Yes. Are you selling to family or anyone outside? Country? We are selling to anyone who can enjoy our lifestyle okay. and who is willing to be part and parcel. All right. Yeah. Let's go back to the over 204 mm -hmm. acres mm -hmm. that you guys have. Mm -hmm. Your mom, mm -hmm. seven siblings, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You, Unawaita and Ko, yes. na auntie. Yes. Then they allow you to take control and manage this place, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. How has that relationship been like, family to family? Has there been an uncle that was like, Aya, uyu anatuambia nini, uku ni kwetu, yeye akataftiwe kwa, kwao, unatuambia nini kama mtoto? Elena, I'll ask you a question. Yes. Which family member or which families have you seen that they are all um, going in one straight line? Mm. Do you know any? No, actually. Exactly. Yeah. In every family, you have your bad apples, you have your good apples, you have those sitting on the fence. I think the thing that we have to say is that God has really blessed us to the point whereby there has been some infighting, but not heavy. Okay? Not heavy. And the beauty about it is, I can't explain it, but all my uncles and aunties have always come from a point of teaching. They might criticize you. Of course, you have to understand it comes with, with the seniority. But how will you take that criticism? Do you take it negatively or will you take it as a positive, regardless of how hard they hit you? I think the mental state is take every criticism as a positive. See it as something you might need to change in you. Although, if you're over-criticized, you have to understand that family is family. And if someone criticizes you over, you have to be able to sit down with them and say, hey, hapa, hapa mm. Yeah. And if you don't communicate as a family, that's where things go wrong. Yeah. You're remaining with that heart inside you. For how long, surely? And you realize that that person who criticized you has moved on. That criticism, five minutes later, if you re ask them, eh, they, they, in most cases, they forgot about it. They forgot it. about it, but you have carried it. Yes. How will that affect you? Mm -hmm. yeah. How did your grandpa make sure that the land stays in the family? Through his will. Talk to me about all that. All seven people have to be in total, um, if it's to sell, all seven have to be in total agreement with a lawyer present Yeah, that they are ready to sell. Yeah, It can't be just one person deciding. Yeah, They are ready to sell. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so that's how it works. There is a will. Yes, that yes. All that. and every, every year or so, we go over it the whole family, including fourth generation. Yes, we, they have to understand it. Including yes. even you, your daughter? Yes. Right now she... We've knew. just done it, I think, this past weekend. We had our business and family AGM, whereby we are trying to set up our family council. So everyone has to understand. This was the will of my grandparents. Every now uh, family unit after that has to write their own will. Mm -hmm. And 
every family unit after that. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing that can be left in abeyance. Yeah, no, okay. everyone has to be straight. Yeah. So when mm. the profits come, do you divide into those seven houses? Yes, it's divided into seven. However much it is. There has not been a dividend <laughs> <laughs> for some time, uh -huh. but that's what we are working on. Yeah, that's why, that, hence the reason why the family has allowed the third generation one to come and help manage the place yeah. as, as, as they become, as they, we call it, you're helping to manage as the training continues that will allow you to be handed over. Mm. You have to be trained. You can't just be handed over something. You have to be trained. Yeah. You have to be trained in coffee husbandry and in governance. What does that mean? Yeah. So even me as a, as a new director, I have to be able to, there's a, there's a program I have to attend within the next month or so. Yes that all new directors have to go through mm -hmm. and it's a one month course yeah and you've got to go through it you have Akuna to Akuna cha. Ooh, wow. eh. kutoka siku mm. yeah kutoka when yeah yes. since when was well, since when did god give you anything just like that no mm. there has to be a price you have to pay mm. yeah and you mentioned when you first came here there were not a lot of family members no. around but i'm seeing a lot now i saw somebody here somebody there nani amevuruta watu sasa kujeni mungu sio mimi mungu my wife and i okay um my grandmother at the time she was still uh, my grandfather passed in 2012 my grandmother the, yeah sorry yeah mm -hmm. it's okay uh so we moved in in 2014 uh primarily to work here but as now we started living here, my grandmother was very sick. And it was, ah, since there's somebody also living here, my grandmother can come back from Kirinyaga and here because this place is easier to access hospitals. Yeah. So my grandmother came, then my aunt got also quite sick. She came and people have just been coming back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pole pole. Yeah. And now we are a full family again. Yeah. yeah. There was a time this house was empty for quite a while. Yeah. Well, family members would only come on Monday for a family, uh, for the agricultural committee meetings. And once Monday is done, guys are off. Or we would only come during the Koroga. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, now that, yeah, we have family living here, we can look after the gardens. We can look after everything just yes. to make sure that this is a family home. Okay. A part of your cousins also helping you manage yes. the farm. Yes. Yes. I mean, uh, look at it this way. Uh, for Karangoro Coffee and Tours Limited, Wangeshi is my cousin. Yes. She's the CEO. I also have Wanjiko, who is our admin. Mm. She's my cousin as well. My wife also is our COO, okay? And Wanjiko is our admin. So right now, we are a close-knit family. Yeah, we are about four of us running Karangoro Coffee and Tours. I'm the one on the Karangoro Estate side as the director. Plus, I'm also the chairman of our agricultural committee, which also includes another cousin who lives maybe a kilometer just away or 500 meters away. Uh, she's also part of the agricultural committee. So we are a consultative family. Okay, so every three months we have a board mm. and we meet as a board to go through all matters. So we have agriculture, we have investment, we have real estate, uh, we have... Um, what else? What other? There's audit. Yeah. So we have all these committees that help govern what we are trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what do you think is making a lot of young people come back to the farms, come back to traditions? What else is there out there? Not much. Yeah. I mean, people have started to understand. Farming is actually Kenya's mainstay. It's just that we've been fooled to think the service industry is much better than, no, agriculture. Kenya's mainstay is agriculture, and if we can do it right, we can, we can, we we, we can supply the whole of East and Central Africa mm -hmm. properly, and we can have the other countries emulate what we are trying to do. We have Lake Victoria Basin; that's a whole fertile region itself. Central is highly fertile. I mean, we have Taita Taveta. We have, we have all. Even in Isiolo, people are growing watermelons and things. Why can't we just follow that trajectory? Knowing that if you do your husbandry well and add the aspect of value addition, you can't go wrong. Let's get there. Yeah. Let's now talk about Value coffee. addition is everything. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about coffee. Mm. There's so much coffee around, mm. but the opposite is also true. 
a lot of people plucked their coffee tree and they were like you know what we are not doing this coffee thing anymore it's not profitable let's grow avocados etc etc first what are your thoughts on the people that you know just decided to do away with coffee and start something else and from where you are sitting is coffee profitable and what makes it profitable first and foremost if you've already removed your coffee trees i don't blame you i don't blame you i don't judge you it's been a long time since coffee has made any money in this it's been a long time and so if you've had the misfortune of having to remove your coffee trees to plant something else that you feel is more profitable kudos well done to you mm -hmm. and i hope it works out i'm coming from a different aspect whereby i have been more or less forced to understand coffee can be profitable but it cannot be profitable if we are leaving it at the processing stage what we are doing is we are giving out gold yeah to receive charcoal yeah so we start with the wet wet processing you get your qualities right okay then you come and you dry it and then you mill it and then you give it away okay that's what is really happening we have been forced to give out the green bean and then someone in germany makes billions yet they produce not even one iota of cherry not even one they don't even have one tree how is that possible people have seen the gold that we have and are mass producing it and they are value adding it and they are coming back and it's it's now coming back as diamonds surely what else are we going to do so i know now that in order for our farm to be profitable i have to now start seeing a way to start removing my coffee out of the auction and looking for the business it needs to get a direct sale not based on commodity trading but on my taste on my specialty scores and my taste okay i've already started getting a, a lot of offers from a lot of people out there so we pray that it comes it comes well and we are blessed with those kinds of things mm -hmm. another thing we have said is if we don't even get a direct sale it's fine let us sit back and roast everything and sell it as a roasted final product okay it is a difference between $4 a kilo okay to $22 wow that's a big that's a difference that's a discrepancy wow yeah yeah that's a discrepancy when you roast and get a good roasting profile you're able to sell your coffee at $22 a kilo packeted at the auction the most okay there is a farm in Nyeri that in Sagana that are starting to get $12 a kilo but still still it's not where it should be mm -hmm. and that $12 is for about 40 bags of aa surely when you look at that and then you look at what other grades that they're having yeah they might yeah they'll be happy with that one but the rest might not achieve that mm -hmm. however roast this thing here yes gets you from $4 a kilo or 5 or 6 whatever it is to 22 wow yeah that's where the money is and hey i love where the money is <laughs> let me this here mm -hmm. when you roast it mm -hmm. the end product now we start here yes this is your cherry mm -hmm. Yeah and this is good enough to go to the processing factory yes. okay and is a as a farmer you have to monitor how your cherry is expanding this is a very good size okay so every time i have to do this i go around i just be checking the size of bean oh okay yes okay yeah okay good. that is usually a good size it has yes. the mucilage mm. it's very sweet i used to eat you. that yeah go ahead and eat ah. it's very good <laughs> Yeah, mm. when Shosho used to refuse I us to, to buy sweets, mm. just go around. Mm. I used to yeah, pick at mm, my Google like mm. 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 just yes. do that is very sweet. Yeah. Eh? So this is a good size, eh? okay? But uh, understand something, why we do wet processing is so that you can see the quality of this seed. People think because it's big, it's wow. Yeah. Yeah, but you can have a big seed and it's empty in the inside, okay? So why do we do wet processing? Because we say anything coffee is measured by density not really by size this at this stage it's density yeah once it goes into water and you want to ferment it yeah you get your four your four quality tiers is parchment 
parchment two, parchment three, and then parchment light. Mm. Okay. Okay. So it's always determined by if this seed you place it in water and it sinks, that's the best quality. Wow. That's the best quality. If yeah. it floats, you have a light quality. Okay? okay. Like I said, in coffee, nothing is ever bad. It's just lower, lower quality. quality. Yes. Okay. So anything that floats, we call that a P3 or a P light. Anything that sinks, you can now categorize that as parchment one or parchment two. All right. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Done. Once we've done the fermentation process mm-hmm. and the seeds have dried, because the drying now, when your coffee comes out of the factory, it's wet. Yeah, it's been there for about 12 hours to even 24 hours. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when it comes to the drying beds, it has a moisture content of about 80 percent, it's quite wet. Now, the trick is to get a moisture content of 10.5 percent, that is the best uh, situation for roasting, yes. and to get your green bean to have the right weight density. Okay, so once it has dried, it usually comes out this way. Mm. Okay, like a peanut. Mm. Okay, mm. all right. And there are people who can actually bite this thing and tell you the moisture content. Oh, yeah? They're biting mm, and they tell you mm, 16, 17. Then when I go, I get the car, small car machine, I place a few, they are correct. Yes. Yeah, that's another kind of training. Hey. And don't think I'll ever get it in my <laughs> life because <laughs> that is some serious. Our, our manager here can do that. And sometimes it amazes me yeah. how he does it. I have to put it into a car machine and do the moisture. He bites and tells you to take another three, four days, it's mm. about 17, and it comes out that way. And there are many people here who can do the same. The same. Learn from them. Good. When you see someone biting and telling you moisture content, take them around the farm, they'll tell you things that even the best experts cannot tell. Uh-huh. Okay? Yeah. Now, once you achieve 10.5, yes. we are ready for milling. Mm. Milling is removing the outer shell The outer shell of this, yes, this thing here, okay. You can see when I crush it oh, with my fingers. Oh, it turns greyish, this greenish, greyish. The green, you see? Yes, that's the whole point of even getting that moisture at ten point five, oh. and it has to be sun dried. There is no other aspect that can change the color of that coffee from being white when it comes out of the factory to turning to this green. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's sun dried okay. all the time, so yeah. you have to get this that. green bean. Okay. This is what we give away. This is the goal I keep on saying to people. We are giving it away. Okay. Let me ask you a question. Because we are here, right? Mm-hmm. When the farmers come, they get this, right? This is cherry. And this a lot of farmers cherry? are paid at this stage. They are paid at and this stage. And a lot stage. of farmers don't understand what happens from this stage to where to we are here. This stage. Eh? Yes. How much are they paying me in dollars for a kg on this stage? Yeah, we do it in shillings. So here they could get 50 bob. Per kg. Per kg. E, e, yeah. per kilo. Depending on your cooperative. Okay. Now this is the gold we are giving this is away. Now we are the gold we are giving away. Now that one goes from about fifty bob, maybe even sixty bob, or even on a good year, eighty bob per kg. This one now translates to if you have a good coffee crop, can translate to an AA giving you about five to six dollars a kilo. Wow. So you can see the discrepancies already. Oh, yes. Okay. Yes. Ah, yeah. Now, you jump from this green bean, okay, and then you take it to here to roast it, mm. okay? That roasting process now gets you from $6 a kilo, if you have the best, to 22 a kilo. What? Mm. Yes, so where we are going wrong is the cherry stage. Allowing a farmer to be paid at cherry stage. A farmer should be able to know once it once a cooperative gets it, what are the processes they are using to get you the eventual crop. Yes. So what is happening is, as a farmer, you're getting happy with sixty bob a kilo. Your cooperative is getting six dollars a kilo. Yes. And, and then, then whoever the cooperative is selling to twenty two. The there are 22. some countries that even give you thirty dollars per kilo. Cup, per cup, cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we say there are countries out there minting from this because they have understood it. While us, they are keeping us uh, below the education required. So, where is the government in all this? The government is trying to come in now. Hey. Sorry, sorry. It's okay. So, mm-hmm. so, what the government is trying to do 
is first they are trying to get you the best value here. Okay? Yes. That can't happen. Mm -hmm. You need to go around teaching farmers. Yeah? That this is not the end product. Wow. This is the end. Is the end product. This is just this ground. Okay? That is the end product. So, how do you benefit your farmers as a cooperative if you tell them we are now going to value addition? We are not going to pay you at the cherry stage. We'll give you, we'll show you each and every stage that we're going to take. And then your coffee will be sold to this organization mm. as a final product. And then you will get, let's say you got as a small scale farmer, you got maybe five tons yeah, in your farm. Yeah, that five tons should equate to what? As mm. roasted coffee. Then wow. you get the final. That's, that's basic. Is this an African problem? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's our. It's it. It's it's basically an African because. Uh, how how do I put it in a way? Colonization in a way taught us to learn how to read, but it blocked us in a way that we are relying on the the the, the first world countries to help us out. We need to figure it out ourselves. What's hard in this process? Is it the machinery? Knowledge. Knowledge. That's it. It's not machinery, it's knowledge. I mean, what machinery are we using that's different from what the Wazungus used to use? None. It's, we are just learning that there's another step. Yeah? And that step only comes with a bit of knowledge. Mm. Yeah? And we need to take that step to get that knowledge. I mean, if you're even a farmer of tomatoes, Okay, figure out how you can value add those tomatoes or come together as a group of farmers and see how best to add value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, don't just sell the tomatoes. Yeah, you're getting cheated left, right and center. That broker will buy each tomato at a, at a certain price and then double it where he's going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's making mad profit from you. Okay. Yeah. How many tons of coffee do you guys uh, produce per harvest uh, in a good season? Okay. Our Alex, since we're coming from a drought uh, situation, yeah. um, we've had to kind of restart the production process because here some of the trees were really hit hard. Mm. So we are about to produce 70 tons this April and we are hoping for another 30 or maybe 35 in November. Okay. Yes. How much would a ton give you <sighs> when you get here now? A ton. Uh, multiply 1,000 kilos by 22. Yeah, hmm. yeah. Multiply one thousand tons by twenty-two, you get the dollar. Yeah. Then multiply by whatever rate the dollar, the dollar is, is at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then you get your money. Mm -hmm. mm. And the beauty about value addition, it's your money. It's not flowing through other people's hands. Okay. It's your money. How do you then get this, the final product, that one where the gold is, that uh -huh. one there, the roasted, how, the roasted one? Uh -huh. How do you get it from here? to other countries out there. You look Is for that process easy? Look for partnership. It's not easy. In any business, even if you're doing a hardware and you've put it here, first of all, there's that thing of looking for all the people, all the, uh, the contractors constructing so that you can get contracts to start daily. In any Biashara, you need to do the groundwork. You need to know who is interested in buying coffee. Yes, so China, the US. Everyone is interested in getting direct sales from a farm. Because from a farm, you can guarantee the quality. Mm -hmm. You understand? So take advantage of that. Invite them to your farm. Yeah, Cup the coffee. Let them taste it and let them now determine how your business relationship is going to be through the taste of your coffee. Mm -hmm. Not because you produce 40, 50 bags of AA, uh, 100 bags of AB. That, in coffee, that does not make sense anymore. Taste. As a farmer, first look at your husbandry and get it right. When are you supposed to put fertilizer? When are you supposed to put manure? When are you supposed to be checking for diseases? All that has to come. You have to set up the system on the farm. Mm. It's a system. Whereby even if I went to hospital for a few weeks or I went on holiday, all I can do is just call the manager and say, to me fikawapi. And every day he would be giving me a report. This is where we are. This is where we are. This is where we are. The next step of on all this is to make sure we have the technology whereby through the touch of a phone, mm -hmm. I can see what's happening in the field. Yes. Yeah.
through the touch of through a phone. Through the touch of a phone. What makes your coffee stand out? Because I was I was actually going through your Instagram mm -hmm. page. Mm -hmm. So many farm tours, so many people come here just mm -hmm. to taste and just have, you know, the tours and just walk around. And one of the things is just like your coffee is something, to be honest. I have I'm not gassing you up, but I've not tasted good coffee in a minute. What makes yours stand out? The fact that it is treated with love. <laughs> 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 it is treated with love, blood, sweat, and tears. I mean, even my own people, they can even tell you. They can tell you it has been a journey, hasn't it? It has been a journey, uh -huh. yeah, of blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. Sometimes you'd go roast and you burn the whole thing. Ah, Kwani, you think we don't make mistakes? Huh? You burn the whole thing. And sometimes even during husbandry, you get one thing wrong and you've lost. Yeah, You've lost a ton or two of, of, of coffee because maybe you were supposed to irrigate tomorrow. Then as you want to irrigate, your machine starts breaking down. And then you lose two weeks because you have to fix them. You've lost. Yeah, so it's blood, sweat, and tears. Mm. Yeah. What coffee is it? What Arabica. coffee do you? Yes. Uh -huh. What's Arabica coffee? Whew. I think that is now a narrative that now comes from long time. Eh? Yes. Arabica coffee. I, Arabica coffee started in Ethiopia. All coffee, whatever anyone tells you, it started in Ethiopia. Then went to Yemen. I think that's where the Arabica yes. <laughs> came yeah. through. Mm -hmm. Okay. But all coffee started in. Ethiopia and it has taken a whole long journey to go all around the world to get back here okay and that was in 800 AD so you can imagine what has happened so here in Karunguru we have three types that we grow mm -hmm. SL28 yeah and SL means Scott Laboratories oh. okay it was done by Henry Scott all the way in 1900 from finding a kaplant in Tanganyika that could do well in this kind of situation. Kenya is not a rainforest kind of situation. Mm. We are kind of almost drifting to semi-arid. So what kind of tree will work well in such an area? Well, they found SL28. Uh, then SL28 came through all the way until maybe almost 50 years ago when Rui Rui 11 came through. Mm. Okay. Now Rui Rui 11 we is... We have a, our own name. Hey, Rui imagine Rui Rui 11. Rui Rui 11. <laughs> <laughs> it's ours. <laughs> It's a beautiful talk about a tree that a farmer can just look at and smile because all he has to do is prune it, put manure, not even compound fertilizer, manure. Prune it well, manure, cap it. That tree will give you in November and it will give you again in April. Two harvests? Yeah. SL is now going to one. Yeah. Roiro 11 gives you two. Whether it's Kidogo, whether it's it's there. Then secondly, it's resistant yeah, or tolerant to leaf rust. Wow. That is the disease that hits us in Kenya like crazy. We are always spraying our trees and that is why the profit never <laughs> comes through. Because if you look at your books, how much copper did you put in that, in that SL for it to remain strong? So I'm also finding out as I'm getting into the coffee industry, mm -hmm. don't let your SL28 trees pass more than four years. Yeah, cut the mother stem because after four years you start getting problems. That leaf rust never disappears. Your tree is getting old. So the younger the tree, the better for oh. you. Mm. Yes. And even the better quality of coffee. So when we allow the suckers to start growing, we start that zero to one years, then mm. one to two years. So at the one to two year stage is where you get the best quality ever. And you get it for another two years. Mm. Then you have to start the, the recycling process of removing the old tree and allowing yeah, the new ones too start producing. Okay. Of course, yes. Rui so Rui 11. Rui 11 is good. And now we graft it. Now, why do we graft it? The original Roiro 11 is a shal shallow root tree. It's a shallow root. So during a drought situation, that thing will wither and die within a very short time. But if you look at a SL28, it takes longer. So if, um, if the drought situation has started today mm. and there is no rain for the next three weeks, you'll find your Roiro 11 starting to wither. But your SL will take another few weeks before it shows you signs of stress. Mm -hmm. We call it stress. Okay. So we graft it so that mm -hmm. you get the tolerance of the Roiro 11 and then you get the root system of the SL28. Okay. 
which now allows you to get the bounty of cherry that you want, provided that you prune it well and you look after it well. Foliar and manure. Just that. Grafted Roiro 11 doesn't need too much. Foliar, manure on a yearly basis. Yeah, then you will find your compound fertilizer intake starts to drop. Yeah, then you'll be looking at anything as a per tree basis, not as a block. Mm. You start now looking at if your system works correctly, you will start using so much less because you're saying, okay, in my SL block, we have 8,000 trees, but I can see only 100 have leaf rust. How much have you saved? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. how much have you saved? Mm -hmm. So you go spraying just those. 100 and you just spray around them just to make sure the disease does not spread and in farming always be a proactive farmer you're always looking never be that kind of farmer who calls your guy wherever you are you could be in the bahamas for all i can and you're calling him to say umefanya umefanya that guy is stealing from you 100 percent okay i've known guys who have a <laughs> who have like two cows and he has gone through the training and he has done his mix ratios right. And when he was there, he was getting 20 liters from each cow. That's amounted to 40 per day. And then all of a sudden he went to Nairobi and after three weeks, those cows are only producing 20 liters mm. per day. So it's because your guy is taking the extra milk yes. and selling. And then now you start removing from pocket. Yeah. So as a farmer, you have to take the time to understand your product, what you're farming and be there. Now that's the agribusiness you part of it. Mm. Wow. You have to be there. So okay. here in Karunguru, what we do is we have a management meeting on Monday. By Tuesday afternoon, all the tasks and what it costs has to come out. Okay? So that I can approve, the manager can approve, and our CEO for the farm says, I agree. Yeah. That figure that you see at the bottom should not change when we are paying people on Saturday. Mm. Yeah. That one? Third one, man, if you're, if, if you're not loving what you do, I'm so, sorry. I'm so sorry. There's nothing you can, there's nothing that can replace passion. I also never thought I would be passionate about agriculture. But when you watch that, you can actually sit with something and watch it grow and improve. Mm -hmm. That's how it all started at the dairy. The fact that you can feed a cow properly then moves from five liters per day to that, eh? after it gives birth, because you've seen that growth, then you're seeing a coffee tree that you've put all the right things and you've pruned it well, producing. Mm. There's no joy. There's no better joy that for me that comes out of that. I love to see what I do. Yeah, I'm a physical. You are physical, so passion, yeah. passion. Yeah. Have you felt though sometimes like this is too much? When Every day, every time. Every, every day. day? Every day, every day. I'm a human being. Every day, uh, you wake up saying, "I God, please." Hey, it is five thirty. Lazima niamke. See, I just sleep for another one hour. But then, after about fifteen twenty minutes, your mind, yeah, something just tells you, "I must get up." If you don't get up, then what bread are you bringing at the end of the day? So mm. you just get up, and once you're in the farm, that whole thing disappears. Yes, sir. Mm. And I remember I was asking Mangeshi, "Why do you think it has been easy?" for your family, you know, generation after generation to trust the next generation to take care of this gold. There's nothing like trust. It's you have to prove that you're worth being handed over this thing. There's nothing like being given something with a okay? Yeah. Have that one. No. When wangu, shikai. No. Even with my own father, there was nothing at you How many times did he send me out of the house to go and sell? Yeah, 500 shillings, go. Yeah, how you get to sell, you sell. But then he would teach me. Go see the watchman who is always at the at the gate there, befriend him, give him a kasu <laughs> for, for his mm -hmm. lunch. Yeah, get to know him personally. Then you'll find out that as anyone enters to occupy the building, he's calling you. Yeah, and every time you make a sale, unampatia kakitu, unamuambia sante sana. Mm -hmm. You'll conquer that whole building. So that's the whole thing about, yeah. Be nice to people, be humble, get to understand. Yeah, and even our workers get to understand the problems mm -hmm. that they are facing. Yeah, just because you sit in an office does not mean you should be aloof to what is going on around yeah. you. Your workers also have issues. Yeah. yeah. And given this is a family business, what happens if when your kids tell you, are daddy on yako? See, to turkey farming. Do they even have the time to tell me something? <laughs> <laughs> Why, what? Yes, they do. 
excuse me. Yes, they do. For who? They are freedom. For who? Their choice, their life. They are children. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You can tell me that when you're fickering 21. Mm -hmm. When you've passed 21, mm -hmm. we can discuss. That's it. When they are 21. When you're 21, and, you can mm -hmm. discuss. When they are 21 yeah. and they tell you, Daddy. Come on. Me, I won't do then this. Then what thing. kind of a father am I to just sit there and just tell you, okay, you do whatever? No. My, my firstborn knows the farm. She's 20. She knows the farm and she does our social media to tears. I tell you not. Wow. She knows the biashara. Yes. She might not know the farming 100%, but she's getting to understand the marketing side of it. Okay? Secondly, my second born knows coffee. My second born can tell you which is a Royro 11 just by looking. This is a Royro 11, that's an SL28. And he can tell you whether that cherry has expanded to satisfaction. Mm. He can tell you. And my son usually goes around with his bike and will come and tell me, this and this and this is going wrong. Next morning I'm running. Yeah, and he's right. As a parent, you push your children in a direction you need them to go. That gives them the basis of their character development. When they pass 21, they can now have a decent conversation about the future. But without teaching them what you know, how do you expect them to know? Yeah, they're children. They're going to get all the advice from A, B, C, where, here, there, and it's going to confuse them. Mm -hmm. You're the parent for goodness sake. Sit down with them, look at what they like, see how their talent can mix into what you're already doing because you can only teach your children through what you're already doing. Don't, don't teach them through what Michael Joseph is doing out there. Yes. He's Michael Joseph. Yeah. You, you're who? You're Lin Gui. How are you going to teach your kids? Through what you do. Yeah? On Saturdays when they are free, you're going for a shoot, you go with them, they see. What is this lighting for? What is that camera for? What is that one for? Then they get to understand and you're telling them this for this, this for that. They might not want journalism later, but in case of anything, yeah, they can come with you and uh, then handle the situation. They know the basics. Yes, they know where mom gets that 50 bob. Mm. Mm. Wow. So when you tell your children I'm broke, they understand you're broke. They understand. They get it. Mm. Yeah. And they are good. Yeah. Wow. Jesus, so let me ask you something we had said, you know, earlier. There's a reason they take our coffee. There's mm -hmm. a reason they say they are going to add this and this and blend it with this and this to make it strong. Hey, Lynn, you want to get me into trouble? No, I don't want to get you into trouble. <laughs> I just want to ask an honest question. Is our coffee, given that Kenya is known for its coffee, why do we got to take it there to be blended with something else? Is our coffee not strong enough as No, it it's because we don't know. We don't know. It's knowledge. Everything is about knowledge. Our coffee can be taken as is. I am giving you Karungoro grown coffee. I've not even gotten our farm from Kerenyaga. It's what we grow here. What kind of soils do we have? Red, rich. As you go up the mountain, it gets darker, richer in minerals. Yeah. So even the taste profiles change. Kerenyaga and Nyeri will not taste the same. Kirinyaga and Moranga will not taste the same, and Moranga and Kiambu will not taste the same. Different aspects. How a farmer farms, the soils, and how he deals with his soils. Yeah. The guy in Busia, because it rains practically every day, he will be getting double A like crazy, because what does a coffee tree really need? Water. That cherry, once it dormant, what's his dormancy stage for 35 days, once it, it gets hit with water, it expands. Wow. So guys in Busia can be getting double A's like crazy. In fact, if farming was done well, mm -hmm. Busia would be getting you cream, yeah? Wow. Double A's throughout. Kiambu would be getting you your taste profiles, your different levels of C grades, A, B grades. Nyeri and, uh, and Kirenyaga would be getting you rich tastes, rich, yeah? Ukambani would be getting you one crop per year, but I'm telling you, that crop, yeah, would be, Kenya should be the world's producer in specialty coffee. We have everything. We have the basics. The problem is we are not moving past that, yeah. We are not getting that knowledge, mm. yeah. And everything now is, information is at the tip of your fingertips. And you, you just press up, yeah, come on, yeah. Even me as a farmer, I do go through chat GPT <laughs> if wow. I need information. Sure, and then I change it according to what I, and I read. Yeah, there, things have changed. Brazil are going into farms with a machine. A machine, yeah, that picks and prunes. 
Colombia are more like us, but they have gone to the point whereby their research foundation is by farmers, not government farmers. New technologies, new trees, new species are coming out all the time. Kenya can get there. If mm. we just take this thing a bit more seriously, we can get there. Yeah. yeah. How is the reception of the coffee in the Kenyan market, your yeah. brand? Uptake is slow, uh. but I can guarantee the minute someone tastes our coffee, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's yeah, good I've, coffee. I've, by never, the... I've never heard of anyone who has taken our coffee and gone back to what they used to take. No, no, no. Our coffee is the best. It's good. Mm. And not just Karunguru coffee, Kenyan coffee. coffee. Blended, well, single origin. Single. Yeah. Don't mm. start mixing. Mm. Single origin. Single. Single. Okay. Mm. So now the most obvious question why yeah. do people take coffee? What are the benefits of coffee? Ah, if you what take coffee, the... pro- it's a <laughs> soothing drink, man. It's just like the way you take tea and you feel that everything is now calm. Mm-hmm. You can now face the world. I mean, for me, that's what coffee does for me. If I don't take a cup of coffee when I wake up, then the rest of my day, sorry, if I see you're doing something wrong, it can be a very big problem. Mm. But sometimes you need that drink that can just... Calm. calm you down you know coffee does that arabica especially not 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 robusta. not not robust not instant coffee yes let's just call it instant coffee so a good arabica cup of coffee is one you'll feel the acidity and you'll feel the sweetness you might you will not need sugar in it exactly you understand yes so you just take it and you relax and then you can now plan and strategize the rest of your day. Mm. I mean, I have usually between four to five cups. Every yeah, so I have a cup of coffee on the hour. Yes. Every hour. Is that advisable? For me, nimezoea. Nimezoea. Mm. I've been doing this for some time now. Yeah. Nimezoea. But if I don't have those between three to five cups in a day, mm-hmm. I'm not. Yeah. It, it, not I, I'm not feeling that the day is moving well. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe it's an addiction yes. that I've g- gotten, but. A lot of people who take our coffee just tell me it's a soothing drink. It and is. they don't get their heart racing. They don't get that whoa, uh, high blood pressure kind of thing. No, it just mellows you out and they're able to yes. focus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. What are the health benefits to? Quickens your metabolism. I mean, when you take it without sugar, it's, uh, it's generally good for your body. Yeah, If it is done, right. Yeah, The whole th- aspect about coffee is... Making sure you have the right amount of A, 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 B, C, P, B put together so that it can give you the taste profile you need and also roasting it to the point whereby it's more he- it has the health benefits that you require. Metabolism, it, 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 it ensures that your heart rate is mm-hmm. consistent enough, easier flow of blood around the body. There are so many things. I think yes. now we, I just tell people, Google the benefits and you'll see for yourself. Yes, sir. Yeah. And congratulations, you're part of the magical Kenya. I mean, people... Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you're part of the magical Kenya. It's important that people are actually coming to witness, you know, the beauty of coffee in this place. How does that make you feel? Do seeing foreigners come in and out just to see this? And do you think we as Kenyans, we appreciate the gold we no, have? No, we don't appreciate I can tell you the amount of foreigners that come here as opposed to the local community that come here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh-huh. no, no. Foreigners understand. They get it. Kenyan coffee is is gold. It's it's that valuable diamond you can't find. They come to see where it has come from. Okay? But our local population are happy to just say, Yo ni yao. So, yeah, so we are trying to teach Kenyans that, no, Kenyan coffee is ours. It's our specialty. So, why can't we just produce it as ours? Not somebody else's, Mm. it's ours. Yeah. So, take ownership. Good. Yeah. Take ownership of yours. And be proud. And be proud of of it. Of what we have. Yes, and advertise it. I always tell people who come here, buy even 20 packets. Take it to Australia. Let's see what they think there. Mm. I'm even happier to be a partner with you as you be our ambassador. Hi, hello, I'm here. Yeah, yeah, I'll be <laughs> here. So, whenever you're flying out, ask. No, the show is already out. Yeah? The show is already if out. If you ever leave, yeah, the show is out, yes, and the, people are hearing us. I'll, I'll carry some. We carry are going some. to Australia. Yes, carry some. Let people out there tell you what they think of it. 
then you can become our brand ambassador that side. Um, we do work with one or two people out there who order the amounts they require. Of course, they earn their mm. commissions and their money on top. Yeah, so the whole thing is take charge and take pride of your product. Take it out there and show people this is it. I mean, I had, we worked very closely with the Kenya National Chamber of Commerce and they had South Africans coming and they would come to this farm and they are itching and they are waiting just like this to have Kenyan coffee in their market. Wow. Because the same South Africans tell me we are buying coffee from Germany, very expensive. But still, the taste that we find on theirs is not what we find here. Ours is gold. Ours is gold. Good. Eh? South Africa. Imagine. Yeah. Mm. Ours is Even gold. Even in Cote d'Ivoire, I've had people from Cote d'Ivoire coming. Mm. All over Africa. They mm. want the... Africa has a problem. Within ourselves, we are not being able to trade well. And yes. it's too expensive to work together. Mm. But when you're taking it to Germany, US, it's cheap. It's cheap. How does that work? Mm. It should be Africa first, then taking take it out it. there should be expensive, isn't yes, it? Yes, the yeah. way they also send us rejects. Exactly. Good. So they take our best, give us back rejects at yes. expensive rate. Yeah. Good. Mm. And maybe before we wind up, I see a lot of young people here, our barista, you know, mm. compliments to our barista, <laughs> such an amazing... He is an amazing he's, person. He's, yes, he's, he's good, yeah. very artistic. Mm. Huh? And I'm seeing also you have so many young people around, but someone is just... Um, so, some young people are watching this and they are like, Lynn, what opportunities are there for me when it comes to the coffee business or coffee farming? Well, there are two aspects of it. If your family has one acre, two acres, look into the technology you can implement in that. I mean, the world is becoming more social media and technology based. Okay, As a young person, look at the technology you will need to make farming easier. Okay and to make the whole process more um, accessible to you, okay? So from China, we are getting guys who can sat, set up um, solar satellites that can take a whole picture of your place and tell you where you're going wrong. I mean, wow. that's where we are headed. That's where we are headed, mm -hmm. social media and technology. Like I told you, my 20-year-old is our social media manager. She deals with all our social media issues. And she, we are now gravitating her into sales because people are calling her and she has to be able to sell. Yes. Okay. But that social media is what brought her in. If it was not for that, she would be still in the house or going to university, doing whatever she has to do. Yes. And not part of the business. Okay. But that thing that she has as a social media, um, yeah, she always, she, she, she's so proud because she got a blue, what is it called? A blue. The verified. There they are, that one. <laughs> <laughs> she's verified. She's verified, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's and when she showed us that she went all around Kenya smiling. That is what we now told us, okay, I think this one. Yeah, so we had to train her on Matters Coffee mm. and how to to do the videos and what and she's taken it up. Yes. A hundred percent. Yes. So for the young younger generation, it's not about going there and having a jembe and going down there. No. There's always a guy to do that. But you have to be there to show him. And he has to know that you understand how it is done. So you have to learn the basics. Mm. You need to know the basics. But nothing now stops you from taking that practice and making it better. better. That's where the young generation yes. comes. Yeah. Good. Now, how do you come in and help me farm there so that I know that block, that, that corner. Let's say one day I have my leg can't mm -hmm. move. Mm -hmm. My children should be able to tell me, Dad, here is a, here is a thing. And they put it and they, I can see, oh, my trees are withering. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Good. Eh? Mm. All right. I want to wind up. But I've, I've really ha I've loved having this conversation with you, especially from a family perspective. Mm, but as I was telling Wangeshi, a lot of parents are also skeptical mm -hmm. of letting the young ones operate, you know, the farms. They don't know, should will, will, will this legacy continue or not? What do you want to say about that? Huh? Both sides, you know, the parents and also the children. Parents, stop being afraid of teaching your children. Just because you grew up a certain way does not mean they'll grow up the same way. Yeah, You grew up in hardship. You've now made it. But if your children don't know about the hardship, how are they going to become you know, um, uh, responsible and people who, are, who, who can, pro, who can what's it, bring something to the table? Mm. Yeah, hardship builds character. Hey. 
<laughs> hardship builds character so you can't uh, allow your children to be sleeping until midday and saying ah me i grew up waking up at five o'clock ah me my don't come on what kind of boy are you raising what kind of woman are you raising you have to show them yes i know this i grew up in hardship but it made me into the person i am today the go getter i am today so even you children i will show you what hardship is i'm kenny yeah i'm kenny you don't think that's trauma i don't give my children pocket money they do chores they do work then i reward them based on the work so my younger ones i tell them your work is school if the grades are not showing me then don't ask yeah hey. if your grades are not showing don't ask mm. yeah you're getting free food free housing free clothing what more do you want from a parent yeah, but them some are saying just because you suffer they don't have to suffer mm. that was your life then what kind of child are you what did jesus say or what does god say about it spare the rod spoil the child love him. yeah and sometimes the lesson comes from allowing you to make a mistake then we sit you down and you will cry but we'll tell you yes that was the mistake mm-hmm. now this is how you get right. out of it good what do you think yes we let you try and think your way out of it okay when you've thought your way out of a problem that problem will never hit you ever again okay but when i shield you from the problem it will hit you every day mm. Mm. beautiful mm. beautiful lastly two key things you've learned in life up to this stage matters business god first god first we wake up in the morning put him first secondly and and and, uh, and i don't know whether it applies to everyone integrity integrity matters you always have to show people that you mean what you say you're going to do and you do it yeah yeah those are the two things i have learned mm. and one the coffee has also told, taught me patience yes that seedling takes three years before it starts to produce that three years will result in another five before you convert yes. <laughs> and then building your farm to a place where you can produce almost 200 tons a year takes time then you have to be able to just take it and walk with it mm. yeah famine is an art of this thing an art of patience patience yeah patience mm. good eh? what legacy are you guys looking into leaving behind do you think you've upheld your grandpa's legacy i have not upheld it i am in the process yeah well, i'm not perfect i'm i'm not i'm not wuka will never be but i pray that by the time i'm being put six feet under i pray that the people who have left behind can actually say that i tried to mm. Mm. good eh? mm. it's in the local supermarkets the <laughs> no, coffee it's not in the local we are online what? we are online karungorocoffee.com i can take a live quick and get it no, I'm why not, i'm not willing to deal business that way i am online what? and i will deliver to your door Wow, that's interesting. Yes, I am online. Why have you avoided the shelves? <sighs> the shelves are asking for a bit too much than I can afford at the moment. Mm. Uh so we said we'll leave that for the time being. That's okay. a future issue. Mm. And if we do even put it on the shelf, it will it won't be that much. Mm. We are online. Good. Yeah. Look for us karungurucoffee.com or visit our Instagram Karunguru Coffee and Tours Limited. And yeah, you can order your coffee through there. And you can deliver online. Yes. You ship also? We ship also. Beautiful. Yeah. That's beautiful. We are currently you... shipping to the to South Africa and yes. the US. Yeah. Some to Canada and we are hoping that we can start to China as well. Yes. What yeah. Australia mwanaweza nitumia order ni Australia na kwanga ngumu but Tunaweza I mean ta. hiyo show kwa nini? The 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 that show for where they showing the border patrol for Australia. Yeah. To get anything <laughs> to Australia is difficult. Yes. But I am looking for somebody who can help. We're always looking for partnerships. Yes. Always. Mm. always. I hope uh, Ngati and his friends at the Kenya Australia Chamber of Commerce get to watch this. <laughs> we need this COVID in Australia. We need yes, it. We, do. We, we need do. it across the borders. As of yesterday. Because it's really good. Yes. And congratulations Thank you. on such a powerful brand. Thank you for showing us where the money is. Mm. But before I wind up, uh, the coffee farmers around the country, why can't they drop this here, right? 
and you make that into an end product and you also give them good pro nini, money for that. Um, all this because if I have like an acre, mm -hmm. I'm not going to get to where you are, right? But you can easily get my coffee from here to there. And then won't I, leap in a dollar. I, I most likely can, mm, mm. but government licensing has stopped me from doing so. Oh. Government has put in some new reforms that we have to allow to for them to go through the process. So all we are getting right now are what you call the private grower miller's license, mm. which just allows me to work with my own coffee. Wow. Yeah. Hey. But we are praying that they'll be able to start issuing commercial. But you see, also to be commercial, you have to show them that you're capable. You are capable. Yes. I mm. have to show them that I am capable. Mm -hmm. I have to show them that when they come and do the inspections, they can see the mill. Quality they control. They can see the quality controls. Yeah. I have to have all my systems in place. Mm. So at least what is happening now, the government is allowing us yeah, to get there. Good. And at least now we've they, they are with us as we grow yeah, from step to step. I mean, we've worked yeah. very closely with Campbell County. We've worked very closely with AFA and uh, exhibited our coffee through them. So this is just, it's a working relationship. Okay, that's good progress though. Yeah, that's it's a working good. relationship. It's a working relationship. Yeah, and it's a good working I love that. Because huh? yeah. all I want Kenyans coffee growers to do is end at that. It should. This is Hapo. where. And we are all on the same page. Then we are all on the same page. Yes, yeah. I love and, um, that. Here is just one of our premium products. This is our medium roast mm -hmm. that we get from a P1 blend. Yes. Okay, So we have a medium and a dark we get out of this. Mm -hmm. Then from our P2, we also have another blend that we are now calling our house coffee and our espresso. Good. Okay. So that is where we are. Um, yes. From Kerenyaga, we want to come up with our gourmet. Any. It will have my special signature. Mm -hmm. It will be a gold packet. Good. That's a work in progress. Yes. But hopefully by June, July, you will get one. Can I comment you on something though? Thank you. The packaging is beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the packaging, this is good. Thank you so this much. Is, this is beautiful. Yes. My wife and cousin, they've really worked on ah, that. This and is good. I have to commend them because hey. this is one aspect that they, 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 they imagine. So, they, yeah, they didn't even follow my artistic yes, I'm, line. I'm glad yeah. they didn't. Because <laughs> <laughs> this is really good. You know, Thank it's you. giving me deja vu. Thank you. It's Thank giving you. me deja vu. Mm -hmm. But let me ask a quick one. Mm -hmm. How much does this go for? Now, the house coffee at the moment is going for 1,280 okay. per 500 gram. All right. All right. And our medium roast is yeah. going for 1580 mm. per 500 ah, beautiful and very affordable thank you as thank well you. Thank you so much. congratulations thank you. it's a kenyan brand it's a kenyan I'm brand i'm happy yes to have even been part of documenting see, it we have the mark of origin it's beautiful <laughs> yes you do yes. you do huh? yeah. it's a touch of kenya mm, a touch of kenya ah this makes me happy and we have got to be able to put our products out yes. there and i am willing to teach mm. yeah can work out a program whereby if anyone wants to learn good husbandry processes and how do we and how we get to the special markets that we are trying to look for mm. yeah you can contact us yes. through our website and yeah. just ask the relevant questions and we'll get back to you and you'll get the answers yeah. i appreciate you and i appreciate you making time thank you karunguru coffee to the world you know, I hope one day when I'm in London, I just go, I pick, I pick, I pick, I pick, I pick. It's a good thing. Yes, crop it's to a, cup, yes. Yes, yeah. crop to cup. Crop it's to a cup. good thing, you yeah. know. And just to see you doing it means a lot of farmers are able to do it. Yes. My joy will be when the end product is right there and, and not here. Goal. And that, not here. This is... E? This is our goal. Ah, imagine. Halafu in a nipati how many dollars? Was the government giving 80 bob? 80 bob per Cherish kilo. <laughs> per kilo. Halafu in a nipay how much per kilo? 22. 22 dollars. Dollars. 22 say rate a dollar ni? 2,900. So three, almost 3,000. Almost 3,000. From imagine. 80 bob you know. to 3,000. You know. Guys, it's <laughs> mic drop. <laughs> it's <laughs> mic drop for that conversation. Don't say I didn't teach you something. Don't say you didn't learn anything on the show. And I'm looking forward to a day when we as a country can be able to export that mm -hmm. and not this to yes. be honest That's true. when the farmers can be able to because i'm gonna see blaming the farmers don't i mean tafanyaje kitu ya iti bob kazi to be equally sini eri news avocado tano it's true but also look at it this way mm. as a farmer take control 
of your product, you have to get the market yourself. Don't rely on your neighbor. That's Could what happens. Yeah, that's what happened to quails. And for sure it will happen with avocado. Okay? We are all removing our coffee and all other things to do avocado because you saw your neighbor has a market and all his product is being kuna kuna kanta inakuja inachukua yote and you can see he's getting wealthy hata amenunua v8 sasa wewe unaangalia yako unasema i want the same v8 you're not looking at what has this guy gone through in order to get the market and to farm the way he's mm. doing it get to understand the background don't don't see on face value you don't know where he got that car from you don't know where he got his clothes from you don't know what he's doing but get to get it get to understand it yes yeah if you're doing avocados you're doing avocados because you have found the market and you have started signing contracts that you know in your five acre or one acre you can actually produce this once you start producing and you start fulfilling that demand you will start to grow yes but you can only grow with what god has given you first market research do your market research go take your soils for sampling yeah some people the avocado trees are not passing this stage why the soils are too acidic yeah it's like it's like me putting tobacco in here yeah into my coffee and trying to sip it what will my body do reject it your soils are also very acidic look at the ph levels okay coffee prefers a ph level of 5.8 to 7 yeah if i have anything below that that is why i'm not producing enough coffee okay so i have to go back do my analysis get to understand okay once i've done my analysis now i know what i need on the farm hmm. okay then what do i what does the outside world need for me to produce for them so that i can get that market hmm. and actively look for that market yes. don't let your neighbor you will be left with quails like 10000 of them <laughs> don't compare hardware stop stop coming up with 40 different hardwares in one small area come up with just three you can share the biashara between three do other biasharas mm. yeah period two other things Come thank on. you yeah. thank you gitao you, you re- really this is the closest i've ever gotten matters coffee information Asante. i think i've also understood coffee from a different perspective mm. which i think is what everyone was craving to understand because we can't always be praised for kenya is the place where good coffee comes from yeah. and we have no idea no clue no clue mm. we are clueless about so this thing yeah. it's so sad yeah. i know right but don't worry we are impacting the nation one story at, at a time. time tell my people bye viewers goodbye and thank you for joining us this morning and i hope that you will now use karukuru coffee for all your coffee requirements yes. asante asante yeah. guys i hope you've learned something and i really love that we are getting to educate you guys one story at a time we are a nation that has so many resources i don't see why we have got to keep struggling because we lack the information so when i bump into people like gita who has, who are willing to genuinely give us this information free of charge it warms my heart understand the art of coffee understand where the market is take everything that he has said seriously because we can't be the nation where people say how hata kazi yao ni kupigana tu kwa mashamba like we gotta be able to celebrate what you know what our great grandparents left for us i say these people struggled real bad to make sure we even have a cup lot so why are we not utilizing these spaces and you see the power of collaboration of course it's not going to be easy but but when you guys come together and collaborate instead of competing the result are having such a brand go into different places having it in, ter- in international markets so mbona si kahawa yako mbona isikue avocado zako mbona isikue pia ni nguo zako zenye unashona please please but above all understand that it's not easy it requires patient so on the comment section let me know what you guys think we'll be pinning the link to their website also down there and i really do hope you've enjoyed uh, this show suggest what other agri business conversations do we think we should have i love the feedback we are getting from you guys and i can't wait uh, to bring you another one different yeah any different farmers different stories but the goal is to inspire you to be able to 
hii na juu umesema ni pesa lini yeah, una tupa pesa usitupe pesa yeah the goal is to make sure that we get to inspire you one story at a time i appreciate our partners of today's conversation maridad motors thank you for always driving the process you see what i did there yes thank you for driving the process go get your car with those incredible people in kiambu road let them import what's your dream car who hey <laughs> Defender 110. Hey! <laughs> we are selling your car. <laughs> yeah, not this new funny funny thing Even that has come out. Old, old, I want old like the that. I drive a Mitsubishi Galant for 1998, hey. 99 and I've kept it well. I don't, so, I don't know what's with the Karanjas, but <laughs> 110. It's a Karanja thing. 110 can take you anywhere even if you want to cross a lake. Siwache. <laughs> Siwache mashida za hiyo gari hata siwezi taka kuanza ku explain. Sitaki mashida za defender. Hmm? Kama sio 110, eh, Hilux. Hilux. Yeah. Eh, sawa. So, yeah. uh, Erica, you might want to start honestly. Tulikwambia <laughs> uweke hapo hizi gari za watu wanajielewa sana umesema aje. Weka defender car tatu ine hapo maridadi you know or Hilux, but you can always go and import cars with them. They are good people. Yeah. Waambie tu ni mimi nimekutuma. They are good people go. yeah. and they take good care of our audience. Mm. So go import your cars guys, invest in their sake and of course, not forgetting our beauty full people at Kings Developers Limited it's been real you guys getting those apartments with a very credible source makes me happy the details are on the screen if you are looking into owning a home with a reputable company go talk to my people at Kings Developers Limited and also <laughs> and since I get an opportunity to plug in this beautiful product, uh, why don't you try it? I promise this is not an ad. Sijamuitisha invoice when you itishanga Maridadi na Kings, but guys, uh, get this coffee. Order, order online and uh, they've said they can deliver it at your doorstep. Order Test it and let me know what you think. Do you think we need to feature it more on our shows? I'll get that feedback from you after you order. Test it and give me your genuine feedback. I'm out of this place. Thank you to the incredible team. Leo amenionyesha mambo but it's all right. Skola and Muga and the assistants we had today, Joshua, Edwin and Salimo for coming through. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for taking time to compile this show and making sure it reaches our people right on time i'm gonna see you tomorrow at 10 a.m australia here we come don't forget to submit your stories info at lnn.digital to onani bye so trust the process one day your life is gonna change keep on believing